show off my new uh, Minecraft world. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on, and uh, quite frankly, I've been hadn't been feeling very well. One of the bad parts about being as old as I am, I guess. Mm. And the doctors want me to take a little bit more pills than I expected, and I really don't want to. <sighs> well, I know I can't get outside for a smoke, so got my trusty vape here. Which will do justice for the moment. Yeah, it's like crap. All right. Well, I started off a new world because you know you get bored with some, and then sometimes at the same time, uh, you, when they do an update, it's always best to start a new world, regardless. And since they've done the update, I've been actually kind of uh, wanting to try something different. So let's. Uh, Check out some of the things we got here. I got mending on every single piece of armor I have. Of course, it's all leather, but you know what? Mending, not bad. Oh, little tree. Plant that little critter. Now, this island here is just literally infested with animals, which doesn't bother me one bit. I started off with this house. Um, had some friends come in, of course, as you can tell, some of these people aren't the brightest people in the world building stuff like that. <clears throat> and of course, I did build my little nether portal right here. But my main place is over there. I figured we'd get a better view of it when we sit right here. Now, on top... It's just a basic, simple house built on top of the water. Underneath the house, however, is what normally comes with the water worlds lately is underwater shipwrecks. There was a ship underwater, and basically what I did was I rebuilt it and then encased it in glass, drained the water, which was a nightmare. It took me three days to drain all the water out. Gotta love being next to the uh, underwater fortresses because there's always a sponge somewhere or two. And I managed to gather up uh, four stacks of 64 of sponges. Traveling outside the maps, found some bamboo. I've been having fun with that. Let's see what we got here. Looks like I'm going to get a push. Now, of course, as usual, I also do try to put down as much as I can here. And I have the magma blocks underwater. And, of course, since I built this, I actually built it into uh, the underwater fortress. So if I ever want to go inside at any point in time, I can. There's a door accessing it right now. As you can tell, there's a wooden ship. I extended the top a little bit to give it more of a galleon style, Spanish galleon style, and made it a little bit more accessible. That's actually my house. I actually live inside the ship. And of course, I built a little pond in the bottom there, which I will actually be converting into um, my... Uh, where I put plant my food at. And of course, a nice large walkway out here. This was my food area. Of course, I had to put these here because, by golly, if I'd fall through there, I would have been dead. It's a pretty good far drop. Mm. My map room, I just got two more maps left to fill up. I didn't do a very good job opening these maps here. And of course that little white line right there, that's actually from my uh, Frostwalker boots. And on top of the building, I decided to put this up here. I didn't feel like putting it downstairs. These are actually the masts to the ship. I just extended them. Let's see, what do we got today? Goes all the way up to 30, so let's, uh, 
I had a heck of a lot more emeralds than what I normally had here before. But I ended up doing some trading and got a lot of cool stuff. And gold out the wazoo from the underwater fortresses as well does help tremendously. Oh, that's why I'm an eight. Anybody ever wanting to lower the options, they can just by dropping torches down. <clears throat> Dropping the torches down allows the uh, the enchantment of the uh, table to actually go down a few notches just by dropping a few torches down. I never really knew that until I actually tried it. I've had a couple people tell me about it, but I never really speculated too much in it. Okay. Well, first we'll go into the ship itself. Of course, it's nicely carpeted. I love how the wood is stripped of its bark. So every time I see a shipwreck, I tend to take all the stripped wood from the uh, ship itself. Especially the ones outside the maps. If I have too much of it, then I'll just take the uh, stripped wood, drop it in the furnace, and turn it into charcoal. <clears throat> and I do a lot of fishing, so I got a lot of puffer. On uh, occasion, I'll even do some uh, uh, night vision as well. And, of course, ink sacks galore just from having the... Uh, and that's just from the last three days. Because all the squids go over to those damn things over there and end up dying on the block. So I tend to get a lot of them. <clears throat> Plenty of wood that I need. And, of course, I find a lot of these things, all these different types of armor. I normally just wear the chain armor, but uh, since I had the leather and it had all mending one on it, I couldn't pass it up. If we go upstairs to the bedroom, basic, simple, small bedroom, that's all I need. All my sponges. <clears throat> Bought all these books from uh, one of the villagers, that's why my... Uh, uh, except this one, I fished this one up. That's why my emeralds are kind of down low at the moment. <clears throat> Oop, more sponges. More charcoal. Nope, nothing there. More charcoal. Okay, so... And... <clears throat> I used the heck out of the stuff earlier. There we go. Now, of course, normally I was using dried kelp blocks, and uh, those actually lasted a long time, but to obtain so many blocks is a nightmare, and especially having just uh, Respiration 3 and Aqua Infinity 1 was a nightmare chore as it is. I mean, last year Aqua Infinity is all you had. Or the year before last. That's all you needed. You could be underwater as long as you want. And if you ever got caught underwater and you needed air, you drop a torch and then the water would kick it down. Then you would get full air. Now they got to set up a little bit different. I'll just put this here for right now because I forgot about it. Oops, forgot. Put that back. Now, those sponges came in real handy for what we're getting ready to go look into. Now, of course, I need to reset those to where there's all the same type of wood, but... It works. We have a nice large opening here. The ship could use a little bit more TLC, but other than that, it's actually not too shabby.
I think it uh, turned out quite nice. There we go. That makes it a little bit better. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, which I'm half tempted to, I might actually put a mast on it, but to be honest, we don't even need the mast because we're technically underwater. We really can't really do much. Okay. And of course, I put the sea pickles under there just for the heck of it. Lights it up. I'm thinking about actually taking this and turning it into uh, where I put my food at and let it grow under the water or next to the water, but I haven't done anything yet. And here's a fun little place right here to go into underwater temple. Now, of course, I ended up gaffling some of the uh, sea lanterns out of it. <clears throat> already with my silk touch shovel which came in handy and the respiration 3 does do pretty decent I don't have to worry about breathing too much of air and I can run through the entire place grab the gold blocks from this big thing right here that the guardians tend to protect I could, and I'm thinking about doing it too, but if I did, it would be a nightmare, just like it was dealing with the ship. <clears throat> In previous videos, I think I might have done one or two on, I took one of these and completely hollowed it out to the point to where it was one big, huge open space. And I could do the same here because it's already connected to my underwater uh, place where I have my ship at. And then just make it part of it. But once you've done one, you sometimes don't want to do it again. Oh. There. That'll work. Okay, I wonder what I did with that. But yeah, this was uh this was a serious adventure to do. And in order to do it, you go up to the top, take the sponges, and just place them across the top of the water, then the water drops. One by one, each block you just keep dropping sponges all the way across then go down and do the same thing again and again to the point to where you get it all the way down here it took me some time but i opened it up completely which works out quite well and at the same time having the magma blocks down there if you accidentally knocked out one of those glass blocks the uh water doesn't come in so let's Try right here. And looky there. No water coming in. Because of the magma blocks. If the magma blocks were not there, then it would be pouring in like crazy. And luckily I don't have to worry about that. So I'm thinking about taking some of the stuff that I have down below in the bottom decks. And moving them up here somewhere. Maybe like the potion stand and putting it maybe right here. And then some other odds and ends, but I don't know. I'm just happy that I got all this done now. And there was another ship, uh, let's see, out that way. And it was like maybe five blocks underwater. That's it, that's that. And unbelievable. I already started this project and I went, oh man, a ship. I said, man, I wish I'd found this before. This would have been easy. Only five blocks down. I mean, that would have been a cakewalk. And it was more complete than this ship. Now, of course, it wasn't the, uh, the jungle wood ship. It was an oak ship. But I could have made do with it. 
as you can tell this would have been the original opening right here and I just extended it up higher more like the traditional Spanish galleons but it works I'm in the process of trying to uh, since this is on survival if this was on creative this wouldn't have took no time whatsoever but since it is on survival I'm going to try to do the next challenge, which is the scaffolding. I need to get about five stacks of these. I only got so far maybe about two and a half. But you get five stacks, and you take your scaffolding from ground level, which would be probably about right here anyway, and build it all the way up to the highest point where you can't build anymore. You get a trophy for it. Now, I ended up doing a trophy on here the other day, which was uh, catching a fish in a bucket, which showed to be very rare at uh, like like two or three percent, two point five or two point eight. And I don't understand why it's so rare because it was really simple. I mean, I just went up with a bucket, saw a fish by the water, and caught it. Just scooped it right up. I forgot what it was called. I could probably dive out and look, but then the video would cease. So let's try it real quick. Um, notifications. Marine biologist. That's what it's called. Marine biologist. Interesting. So... It just shows a picture of a, a fish inside of a bucket, kind of sticking its head out. And of course, bamboo is what's needed for the scaffolding, and I managed to find one piece of bamboo. And I just kept using it and using it until I got bamboo over there, bamboo over here, and over here. Now, I'm Right now, I do actually have it set on peaceful, which makes it easier, and you can still get trophies on peaceful. But when it gets switched over to, like, say, easy, normal, or hard, that's when you got to be a little bit careful, because you get one creeper in here, you're pretty much screwed. Those critters, when they blow up, you're uh, not usually a happy camper. Then, of course, down here, I have my, my traditional mine shaft. I usually go at bedrock and work my way down, and quite frankly, I've worked a little too far on this one. That there goes all the way to the next map. And man, I didn't think I was going to go that far, but I'm actually about halfway. All the way down, and then I'm about halfway into the other map. I managed to get a lot of diamonds, though. I was very surprised with that. But I think what I'm going to do now is is go this way about maybe five blocks and go all the way down to probably the middle of the island over this way in the center of the map. And then do the same on this side, five blocks down and go all the way down to the middle of the island. And what that will do is that will allow me to open it up a little bit more and then do about five blocks up. Now, the hardest part is... is there's a lot of spots down here that lava is just right there. And as soon as you open that up, it's usually a nightmare. But as long as you have uh, any type of block on you, you're okay. And of course, up here is where I've been getting my lava at on occasion. And a little bit further than I expected to go. Gotta love that run and jump. And I tend to run into lava on occasion. Once I do, this is a perfect spot. Now I just take some buckets and fill up the buckets. And then take it back. And then I can take it to my furnaces. Because quite frankly, lava is in abundance on these maps. Coal is too, but you always have to search for coal. As lava, usually it's fairly easy to find. 
But once you get it, you get lava, you get a good lava source where it's really deep, you're as good as gold. You got plenty of things to use. And lava burns a lot longer and and not very fast. It's a nice slow cook. Hmm. But yeah, for the longest time I didn't have an ender's chest, so I was hiding my stuff in here and then dropping uh gravel on top of each other. You can always tell I had it here because I always try to hold off on one of these uh um, I forgot what it's called now. Cobblestone, moss cobblestone, put it right above it. Made it a lot easier so I had access to it anytime I needed to. But since I'm not using it anymore, might as well take that with me. And take those with me. Never know when those might come in handy. I could use these out here actually. There we go. Okay. I think I'll put the crafting table out here instead. There we go. Now the ships aren't really built the best and they have some of the ugliest styles I've ever seen. But they work. That looks like a little bit extra of wood that should be on. And this side don't have enough. Need to work on that. It's going to take some time to work on the ship to bring it up to speed. But I think it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be going in any sailing races or anything, or or play in the pirate section. But other than that, I think it was pretty decent. I had fun digging in it out of the water. <clears throat> and building my house literally inside of it. But that's all I got on this one here. If you all have any uh, questions or anything like that, feel free to ask me. Send a message on here. <laughs> Sounds like the critters are underwater getting caught. Probably the uh, octopuses. They tend to get caught in those uh, magma blocks a lot. Yeah, but the other one is zombies. They tend to uh, get stuck on it a lot. They can't move. It's not like they die or anything, but they get stuck on it a lot. <sighs> Guardians, they get stuck on it. And they usually can't move, but they can still uh, hit you with their beams. But my plan is next to put out about maybe a whole bunch more layers all the way around. I actually got most of that from the nether. But since there's an abundance under the ocean in the caverns, I might dig up a whole bunch of those and then just bring them back. But until next time, I think I'm going to go play some Killing Floor and then relax for a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to make a video just yet. I might wait till the next update comes on. And I was really, I am really, really upset with uh, Black Ops 4. I really assumed that, hey, you know what? Uh, usually, every time Black Ops does an update, from Black Ops, the very first one, all the way up to 3, they did an update with uh, multiplayer and then zombies. They didn't do an update with zombies. And I'm very, very upset. Because I bought the game specifically for the zombies. Not for the multiplayer. 
So, there's no update for zombies as of yet. Nothing's been said so far as of yet. There's speculations, but they're not too sure when these speculations will emerge. So, they're more concentrating on the blackout and multiplayer and stuff, and I'm writing a, a detailed uh, letter to uh, Treyarch and telling them, hey, the reason I bought your all's game so I can play zombies, why on earth, after from Black Ops 1, 2, and 3, you finally decide not to mess with zombies at all, and here there's only like maybe two or three maps of zombies, but you got a crap load of uh, multiplayer. I think it's completely retarded. And when you think they killed off the old characters from zombies, they reemerge yet again. But at the same time, they got the younger versions of themselves still. And it's just half word backwards, cockeyed, and everything else. It's completely maddening and stupid. Because to be honest, they should have kept the old characters. I don't like the younger versions. They're just too young and dumb. But that's just me. But I am upset with it. I am really upset. I am I am just two or three inches away from deleting Black Ops 4 and just saying hell, hell with it. I'm just, that's how tired I am of it. Plus, the same time, I had to delete my Black Ops 3 off the hard drive because there wasn't enough room. So I'll probably delete Black Ops 4, reinstall Black Ops 3, just so I can play all the old maps and some of the newer maps from then. Because, quite frankly, I miss playing those maps. They're fun. But I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, Black Ops 4 needs to come up with something quick, because if not, I'm just going to delete it, because I don't want to play another zombie map that's completely stupid and retarded, because, I mean, if I want to play retarded games, all I have to do is go to a friend's house and play his Xbox 360. That's usually retarded anyway, because they don't have anything good. Quite frankly, to be honest, um, I had... 30 Xbox 360s when I was working at Renaissance Center. And every single one of them were dead. Red Ring of Death, Red Light of Death, whatever you call them. We had one PS3 that had a problem, but the only problem it had was it got struck by lightning because some dumbass decided not to plug it into a surge protector. <clears throat> so I had all these 30... Xbox 360s that they threw away, I took them out of the garbage, kept them for myself. Manager said, what are you going to do with them? I said, well, I need a wheel chalk in case I ever need to change my tire, because I actually did use one to wedge up underneath the wheel. Worked good for that, and made a great door stop, too. But other than that, I took the rest of them, ran them over to the rifle range, and shot the living crap out of them. I tell you, I had a lot of fun doing that. I really did. I had I had a, I had a couple of Xbox uh, enthusiasts out there. Was like, "What are you doing?" I said, "Target practice, dude." I mean, what do you think? Isn't that machine worth some money? I really don't give a shit. No, no big deal with me. I'll just shoot the living hell out of it. Doesn't bother me one bit. I mean, it's not like I paid any money for them. They were all free. They were in the garbage, junk. And I shot the living crap out of them right in front of that guy. That guy was freaking out like crazy. I'll give you ten dollars a piece. I imagine you would. Bink. Just kept shooting them left and right. Then he offered $100 for two of them. And I was like, okay. So he, I got $200 for two of them. That's all he had. And then I just kept shooting the rest of them. He says, I'll trade you one of my guns for five of them. I don't know. It depends on how good the gun is. And then I finally ended up getting the gun, which I ended up just used his gun and then destroyed the rest of them. And I was like, this gun's pretty crappy, dude. I think I should have just kept the game systems and shot them. So it was, 
little crappy 380. It wasn't even worth crap, really. It was what you would call the Saturday Night Special. That's uh, what you would call a gun that you use them and throw it away. That's all it was anyway. So, needless to say, it was uh, it was interesting. I had a lot of fun. I think I still got one left in the trunk that I used mainly just to shove up under the wheel. But that's all I use it for, really. I mean, it's not really worth anything. Microsoft should just stick with May playing or messing with computers and doing online gaming with computers. When it comes to video game consoles, they're not the sharpest, let alone brightest people. Just leave it to Sony or Nintendo. Microsoft don't need to be messing with that crap. But that's just my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. So as usual, Vita A, and I will catch you next time. Because I need to get a little bit of rest. I mean, heck, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I should be in bed, but unfortunately I can't sleep. Insomnia. Hey, I know. I'll just kick on some uh, regular show or Adventure Time or whatever, you know, pops to mind and just watch those. Great thing about having Boomerang. You can always watch the good stuff. Catch you guys later.